praise the lord hallelujah the lord is good all the time the lord is faithful to his children amen this morning also we are privileged to be alive so we want to thank god the creator of heaven and earth who has made all things good for us amen he has blessed us this morning this hour with a lot of sunshine a breath we have not paid for our breath and therefore there is a cause to thank the one and only god who made everything possible for us so my brothers and sisters all over the world let us commit this day to the lord's hands that whatever we are come to do he sees us true so when the lord is before you everything will work for your good hallelujah so let us begin to thank god for the gift of life wherever you are in jesus name Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, we give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise. We thank you for the gift of life, we thank you for the gift of life. We bless your holy name, we bless your holy name, we bless your holy name, we exalt you, we exalt you, we magnify you this morning. We thank you for the gift of life, we thank you for the gift of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord, my God, we thank you, we thank you for life, we thank you for life, we thank you for life, we thank you for existence. Existence. We thank you for our parents. We thank you for our siblings. We thank you for humanity. We thank you for all the, your creations. We thank you for all your creations. We magnify you. We thank you. We bless your holy name this hour in Jesus' name. Great and mighty God, this hour also take control of our lives. We pray that, Father, you cleanse us in the precious holy blood of Jesus. Cleanse us, Jesus. Jesus, by your holy blood, cleanse all our iniquities, all our transgressions may be clean. In your precious blood jesus in your blood we are clean by your by your name by your name and your blood we are set free from every condemnation therefore this hour in jesus name cleanse us lord cleanse us lord make us whole this morning may we be holy before your holy presence jesus in the name of jesus we are cleansed by the eternal holy blood of jesus hallelujah this morning also let the holy spirit take control wherever you are let the spirit of god let the spirit of christ take control right now in jesus name in the name of jesus hallelujah in the name of jesus hallelujah oh spirit of god power of god in the mighty name of jesus take control we can do nothing that is why you said your disciples shouldn't leave jerusalem until they have received the spirit's power and therefore this hour we agree with your word and say go ahead of us oh lord that your power will work through us you work in us and work through us and therefore spirit of god power of god in jesus mighty name take control take the control take control of the affairs of today that everything will go on successfully to the glory of the king of glory jesus christ of nazareth my lord my god we thank you we bless your holy name we exhort you we magnify you we exhort you we magnify you we say there's none like unto thee this hour in jesus mighty name amen let us use this the time now to praise the name of the living god let us exhort him hallelujah the bible says that he is able is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end there's none like unto jesus our creator the word of god from the beginning that is why this morning just open your mouth begin to thank him let it come from your heart begin to thank him begin to exhort him begin to magnify him yes he because he is worthy of our praise and worship he created you and therefore exhort you wound the vessel as exhort it owner and therefore this morning my brothers and sisters let us exhort the one who have formed us the one who have created us yes in the name of jesus begin to worship him begin to worship him begin to appreciate him for the bible says that enter his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praises this morning let your heart be be filled with the joy of the lord to praise his holy name right now in the mighty name of jesus Great and awesome God, we give you praise. We give you praise. You are the Alpha and the Omega. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. We magnify you, O oh Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. You are Yahweh. We worship you. Jesus, you are God Almighty. We worship you. You are the truth and the life. You are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you. Jesus, you are the Alpha and Omega. Jesus, you are the breath of life. Jesus, you are the word of God. Jesus, you are our Passover lamb. Who 
is like unto you. Grow your skin, O oh Lord. We thank you. We bless your holy name. We exhort you because you are awesome. You are awesome. We exhort you because you are mighty. We exhort you because there's none like unto thee. Who is like Jesus? In the beginning, he was the word. He is I am that I am. Jesus is Yahweh. We give him praise. We give him praise. We give him praise. We give him praise. In the name of Jesus. Our soul says yes to Jesus, our King and our Lord. Yes, the Bible says that he will hold. He will be revealed. Then we will see him right on the clouds of the heavens. Yes, Jesus is able to do this. Therefore, he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of all our worship this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give him praise. We give him praise. We give him praise. Just worship him. Worship him. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. La soko tole mama eleke ndo soko pare ya mama sa kinda ragada. Eleke to soko pare ya mama sa teda ragada. Ele mama toko prega do soleke leke bosko pele ya mama la kianda. Eleke nda hazala baba. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you. We bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Begin to knock, uh, continue to worship him in your heart. Let your heart flow with sincerity. Let your heart flow with the word of God. Let your heart be ready to receive Jesus into your heart. Even as you, you worship him, may you, may, may, you, may you receive him. May you have intimate fellowship with him. Intimate relationship with him by your worship. By your worship this morning. Let it be intimate. Let it be intimate. Let it come from your heart. To be one with the Lord Jesus. To be one with him in your worship to be one with him so that he descend to take he descend he what he, he, he will ride on your praise he will ride on your worship he will inhabit your worship and when he comes he brings glory on the stage therefore this morning begin to exalt him exalt him he's the alpha and omega there's none like unto him jesus is king of kings jesus is lord of lord jesus is alpha and omega jesus is the king of the nation jesus is the king of righteousness Righteousness. Jesus is the king of the ages. Jesus is the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. Jesus is our sovereign king. Jesus is our sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. Jesus is awesome. Begin to exalt him. Be one with him. Have intimate fellowship, relationship with him through this worship in the name of Jesus. Jesus is entirely strong. He is what? He is eternally steadfast. There is none like Jesus. Therefore, this morning, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Exalt him in your heart. Exalt him in your heart. In the name of Jesus. 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 We give you praise, Jesus, for all that you have done for us. For there is none that can be compared unto you. Jesus, our Lord and our maker. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, people of God. The Lord Almighty bless you and expand you. As you want to hear his, uh, uh, his word, may the Lord himself give us insight and understanding. May the Holy Spirit illuminate your mind to understand and understand it well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Today is Easter Saturday. Hallelujah. Today is Easter Saturday. Yesterday we saw the team was... Satan meant it bad, but God meant it for good. Hallelujah. And today, the sub team, the sub topic under this team is mystery of Jesus' death. Mystery of Jesus' death. Amen. So we'll read Revelation uh, 1, verse 17 to 18. Hallelujah. Revelation 1 verse 17. When I saw him, that is John, when I saw him, I fed at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right, uh, he placed his right hand on me 
and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now, look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Praise the name of the living God. This is the vision of John, the revelator. John, hallelujah. The elder. It's not John the Baptist, no. He's the John, the revelator. John, the elder. He received from the Lord Jesus Christ a message to the seven churches. Amen. And inside this revelation, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ told him. He is the first and the last. Hallelujah. The first and the last. The living one who was dead on the cross. Amen. And now he is alive forever and ever. And hold the keys of death and Hades. Amen. So please listen. Satan is the prince and captain of death. Satan is the prince and captain of death. And Bezebub is the prince and captain of the underworld. Amen. When a person dies, that person's soul goes to the underworld. For, for humanity, this is the way. This is how it is. Amen. And key also stands for what? Power and authority. Amen. Stand for power and authority. And therefore, Satan holds the key. Satan holds the power of death. And Bezebul holds the key. That's it, the power of the underground, the underworld. Amen? So, Jesus now, when he died, he went into the underworld and took the key from Bezebul, the prince and captain of the underworld. Amen? That is why he holds the key of what? Death and Hades. The word Hades means grave. Or underworld in Hebrew, it is called Shul, meaning the place of the dead, the place where the soul and the spirit of a dead person go is called Shul. Uh, some other version translated this as hell. No, it can because it is not uh, good. That is why it is hell. But it's the place of the underworld where the soul of a person goes. Amen. So Jesus Christ had the power and authority of Satan and Bezebub, the princes of death and the grave. Amen. The same principle applies to each and every one. Amen. When a person dies, that person has to go to the underworld. Whether you are a believer or not an uh, uh, unbeliever, your soul will go to the underworld. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ or God Almighty, you go to a place in the underworld where it is comfortable. When you are not a believer and you are a wicked, wicked person and you are an evil person, you go to the darkness of all darkness. Though that region is darkened, but there is a different where there's a different places where believers go and non-believers also go. Amen. Therefore, for Jesus to go into the underworld, yeah, it wasn't exemption, exception that he will live in heaven and then take the key from Satan, uh, Bezebul in the underworld. He had to go there. That is where Satan is. When you are fighting a battle, you will meet in a battlefield. And therefore, the battlefield was the underworld. And Jesus went there. He went into the underworld and then defeated Satan and Bezebul and took the key of death and Hades from their hand. Amen. So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 4, 8 and 9. It says, It is written, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts uh, to his people. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended into the lower earthly region. Amen. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So it was necessary that Jesus would die and descend into the lower region. 
The lower region is the place where the soul of a person goes when they die. And Jesus Christ, God became Jesus Christ. He also has a soul. Therefore, the principle is the same. He has to descend into that lower earthly region in order to meet Bezebub, the priest, the prince and captain of Hades. He has to meet him there. Amen. So Jesus Christ also descended to the highest region because if he did not descend into the highest region, he will not uh, be the highest in heaven on earth beneath. So it was necessary that he visit that place and conquered all the enemy of God and conquer all the enemy of humanity. Amen. And this enemy uh, are living under the world. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. It says that he took some captives. Yes, there were believers in those days. Our forefathers, they believed in God. King David believed in God. Some other prophets believed in God. But their practices were evil. Amen? Uh -huh. So when they die, they have to go there. And because of their doubt or unbelief or sin, Satan will hold them captives. So when Jesus Christ went into the underworld, he says he took the captives of Satan. He took them captive because in war, when you uh, you get your opponent, you take them as captives. You take them as slaves. So Jesus Christ uh, took the slaves, the uh, captives of Satan. He now took them captives into righteousness and he gave some gifts. Amen. This talked about the gifts of the, the five-fold ministry, but not, not limited to that. He also gave life to those who were dead for a long time. He gave them life, and after his resurrection, those people also resurrected from the dead and came back to Jerusalem and testified that Jesus Christ came into the underworld. Amen? You see this account in Matthew 27, verse 52 to 53. Amen? So, these were the mystery and the testimonies of those who resurrected from the dead after Jesus Christ's resurrection. Amen. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross, laid in the tomb, spiritually, he appeared in Shoal. He appeared in Hades, the place of the dead soul. Some people call it hell, but actually hell is reserved for Satan and the false teachers and apostles in the last days. Not now. So he went into the underworld, the, the place of the dead people. Amen. All those who died without forgiveness of sins and the purification of the holy blood of Jesus stayed in darkness. Amen. They are waiting in a temporary place where when the Lord Jesus Christ will be revealed and forgive them all their sins before they will be transferred into the bosom of what? Jesus. Hallelujah. So, before Jesus Christ descended into the place of the dead, there was an announcement by Satan, the prince of death, to Bezebub, the prince and captain of the underworld. Because it is Satan that kills. And when he kills, he brings this person to Bezebub, the prince and the captain of the underworld. So when Jesus Christ was on the cross that Friday, he reported to Bezebub, be ready to receive some dead person that is coming. Amen. So there was a conversation that went on between Satan and Bezebub. Amen the prince and captain of the underworld. And now this is the conversation of Satan and Beelzebub, the prince and captain of the underworld. Those who hold the, the power, amen, to all the souls that sin. He have power and he dominated them and he put them in what? Great darkness. Amen. So this is the conversation that goes went on. Satan told Beelzebub, Jesus of Nazareth was crucified and will be brought to the underworld very soon. So this is mystery that was going on when Jesus was hanging on the cross. Amen. The eye cannot see because we cannot see. It's until it is revealed somebody who came from the underworld to report what went on. Hallelujah. So as this uh, conversation was going on, the believers that were kept captives, 
by Satan and Bezebel heard this that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was coming into the underworld and they rejoiced. Why? Because when they were alive, they prophesied, the Lord revealed unto them that which would, took, uh, which would take place. Amen. So they knew that the Lord will one day set them free. Hallelujah. So Satan continued, prepare to receive Jesus of Nazareth himself, who boasted that he was the son of God and yet was a man afraid of death. And he said, my soul is sorrowful even unto death. Amen. So this is how Satan interpreted what Jesus Christ said when he said his soul was sorrowful even unto death. So Satan thought he is a man and he's afraid of death. Hallelujah. Satan continued, beside that, he did many angels to me and to many others. For those whom I made blind and lame, those who have tormented with demons, he cured by his word. And those whom I brought dead to you, he forcefully took away from you. So Satan is telling Bezebo, the prince and captain of the underworld, all these things about Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ claimed to be God, the son of God. Not, not only that, he also set, uh, set free those who Satan has afflicted. Those who Satan has blinded, those who Satan has what, tormented with demons, he set them free. And not only that, he also set some free that were dead. And he brought Satan brought them to Bezebel in the underworld. Jesus set them free by his word. Satan told the priest of Bezebel all these things. Amen. And then Bezebel replied to Satan. To this, the priest of the underworld replied. Who is this? Who is this? So powerful prince and yet a man who is afraid of death. You are saying that he's afraid of death. But look at the things you said he did to you and he did to me. You afflicted people, he set them free. You tormented people with demons, he cast them out. You killed people, you brought them into the underworld, he forcefully take them out from the dead by his word. So who is this prince? A powerful prince. Amen? Bezebel said, For all the rulers of this world are subject unto me. All the kings and queens, prominent people, prophets and names that came on the state of this world, when they die, Satan and Bezebel subjected them under their power and control. Amen? But if this Jesus is so powerful in his human nature to set your Africa free, then I tell you the truth, that he is almighty in his divine nature. So after Bezebel analyzed everything the devil has told him, he's now telling the devil, he's now telling Satan that this Jesus you are talking about, if in his human nature as man, he's able to set the afflicted by Satan free, the dead, give them the dead back life, and yet still he was in the flesh, then he, Bezebel, is telling Satan, uh, yes, Satan, that he is almighty in his divine nature, and no man can resist his power. Amen? So, Bezebel said to Satan, Jesus said he was afraid of death. So when Jesus Christ said that, said that he was afraid of death and Satan heard it, Jesus trapped Satan with these words. It was a trap to trap Satan in order to continue his wickedness so that all wickedness of Satan will be revealed to continue to do what he was doing in order to kill Jesus on the cross. Amen? So, Bezebel told Satan, Jesus trapped you when he said he was afraid even unto death. He was sorrowful even unto death. It was a trap because those who died, he raised back to life. And he himself says he's afraid of death. And therefore, Satan, Jesus trapped you with these words. Amen. And then Satan replied, 
Why do you doubt me and afraid to receive Jesus of Nazareth, both your enemy and my enemy? As for me, Satan said, as for me, I tempted him. Amen. I stepped up the Jewish against him. I sharpened the spear to soften him. I missed the gall and vinegar, and I commanded that he drinks it. Amen. It's in the scriptures. I prepared the cross to crucify him, and the nail to pierce through his hands and his feet. And now he is dead. I will bring him here to. Uh, I'll bring him here as your subject and as my subject. Amen. So this is the conversation that was going on between Satan and Bezebel, the prince and captain of the underworld. That was unknown unto us, but it's in the scriptures, not in one place, but scattered. Amen. So you have to bring the puzzle together and then uh, reveal what went on. Amen. So Satan, the prince and captain of their reply, why do you doubt me? Amen. All right. So Prince uh, Bezebos said, said to Satan, you said right now that he took away the dead from you by force. They who have been kept, <coughs> they who have been kept here until they live again on earth were taken away, not by their own power, but by the prayer made to their God and their mighty God took them from me. So, people, when people died, you know, some people will die, but when men and God pray to the living God, he raised them back to life. Amen? But the Jesus Christ Satan is talking about, he did not offer any prayer to any God, but he just spoke a word, and then people came out of the hands of Satan and the hand of Bezebel, the prince and captain of the underworld. Amen? Who then is this Jesus of Nazareth that by his word he has taken away the dead from me without praying to God? So men and God, men of God and women of God prayed and restored life back to people's life. They raised people from the dead by praying to God. But who is this Jesus Christ of Nazareth that did not offer any praise and a petition to God, but by his word, he raised people to life. Who is this Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Amen? Amen? And then he continued, perhaps it is the same who took away from me Lazarus. Amen? And Satan, Satan answered to Bezebel, yes, the same person, Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, hallelujah. The same person, Jesus of Nazareth, took away Lazarus from the prince and captain of what? The Hades. When the prince of uh, Hades heard this, he said to Satan, I implore you by the power that belongs to you and me. Amen? Do not bring this Jesus into the underworld. Because... When we heard his voice, when we heard his word, we couldn't stand. All the demons and the princes that were with me were terrified because of his word that he called forth Lazarus from the dead. We were terrified. And the Bible says that even the dead gave up Lazarus by the word of Jesus, by the voice of Jesus. Because in the beginning he was the word, the word was with God, and the word is God. And therefore, the word, which is also a voice, had sounds. So when the prince of the Hades, Hades the underworld, heard the voice of the word, they shaken, they were terrified, and he forcefully took Lazarus from them. So who is this Jesus in his human nature so powerful? Then I tell you, Satan, in his divinity, he is almighty and no power can resist him. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So Bezebel continued to say, I know now that he is almighty God. Praise the name of the living God because 
Beelzebub and Satan will always praise Jesus for what he has done for us. Amen. How could God Almighty, who could perform such a thing? Because all the things Jesus Christ has done, it is only God Almighty that can perform such things. Who is mighty in his dominion and mighty in his human nature? Who is the savior of mankind? My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ's death on the cross was horrible, was disgraceful, but it is had and it but it has had divine value. It has eternal value to set the oppressed, the afflicted free. And therefore, in the mighty name of Jesus, wherever you are, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are set free from every bondage of Satan. Every chain that has hold you down for long, in the name of Jesus, by the voice of the word, Jesus, I set you free in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever. He remains the same. He, his power is entered. Praise God. Therefore, do not bring this Jesus here. Bethabot told Satan, do not bring Jesus into the underworld. For he will set free all those whom I hold in prison and their own beliefs. Therefore, they were believers. They were believers who are hold. We believe in the word. Everybody will go to heaven when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But there are believers also who disbelieve and who continue to sin. If you continue to sin, yes, sir, Satan will hold you hold. In bondage because sin will not give them what power to do that. So, Bezebel told Satan, Do not bring Jesus into the underworld. Why? He will set free all whom I hold in prison under unbelief and bound with the fittest of chain of their sin. So, sin is what Satan used to bound people and tie them in the underworld, in darkness, the place of the soul. Hallelujah. So Hebrews 12, verse 15, you see this account there. Amen. So at the end of the dialogue, Christ arrived at what? At the underworld gate. Suddenly, there was a voice of a tender and a rushing of a wind. That is Psalm 24, verse 7. Amen. Psalm 24. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm, sorry, Psalm 27. Sorry, Psalm 27. Please pardon me. Psalm 24, verse 7. Hallelujah. Suddenly, Psalm 24, verse 7. He said, lift up your heads, you gate, be lifted up, you ancient door, that the king of glory may come in. Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. Hallelujah. Psalm 24. Psalm 24, verse 7. Hallelujah. So, lift up your, lift, lift up your head, you gate, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Praise the name of the living God. So when Christ arrived at the entrance of the underworld, they heard his voice. Amen. They heard his voice and he said, lift up your gate, lift up your heads, you gate. Be lifted up, you ancient door, that the king of glory may come in. Praise the name of the living God. So when the prince of Hades, the underworld, heard this, he said to Satan, Depart away from me. If you are a powerful warrior, fight with the king of glory. Hallelujah. Even the prince of the underworld recognized that Jesus Christ is a warrior king. He's a powerful warrior. Hallelujah. 
after this, the priest of hell, Belzebub, commanded his demons officers, officers, shut the brass gate tightly and make them fast with iron bars and fight courageously. Least we be taken captive in the name of Jesus. Amen. So even our the wicked demons will be taken captive by the Lord Jesus himself. Amen. Amen. So all the same head in body head is so when they believed that was head in bondage by Satan and Bezebel, when they heard this, why were they in bondage in the first place? Because they were believers. Yes, they believe, but they also disbelieve in certain things and they also sin. And that sin became the chain for Satan and Bezebel to bind them under the underworld. That is what they are waiting there. And they are waiting for a time when Christ will be revealed in the underworld to set them free. Amen. So, when all the sent head in uh, had embodied had these things, they spoke with a loud voice of anger to the prince of hell. Open, <clears throat> open the gate that the king of glory may come in. Therefore, King David jumped up because he prophesied. At that time, he had this revelation. So, King David jumped up and cried out, saying, Did I not prophesy and said, Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful work to the children of men. For he has broken the gate of brass and cut the bars of iron ascender. He has taken them back from, the, from their iniquities. You find this in 107, 15 to 16. And therefore, King David said all this thing because the Lord revealed unto him that which will take place in years to come. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. After that, another prophet, Isaiah, also prophesied. And he said, I prophesied rightly when I was alive. When I said, the, lead men, the, the dead men shall live and they shall rise again who are in the graves. And they shall rejoice who are in the earth. They will rejoice, they who are in the earth, and therefore they were in the earth, the region of the earth, under the world. They were dead. They rejoiced because they heard the voice of the King of glory. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So, the priest of Hesed, who is this King of glory? Then King David replied, the Lord strong and powerful the Lord mighty in battle so all these things were things that were recorded that would take place amen and it took place because when the Lord Jesus Christ went into the undergrave went into the undergrave people resurrected and this is the account of the people who came out of the grave praise the name of the living God hallelujah you find this in Matthew 27, verse 52 to 53. It was recorded that as, uh, Simeon, the priest, the high priest who uh, blesses Jesus in his infancy, his two sons died. Amen? His two sons died, and then they came back to life after Jesus Christ resurrected. Amen? This account is not in the Bible, but the full um, statement is written somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen? So, the Lord, whilst King David was saying this thing, the mighty Lord appeared in the form of a man and lightened the place which had been before all in time and eternity in darkness. So the underworld, before Jesus Christ's death, remained a place of total darkness. But when Jesus Christ appeared there, he illumined, he shined forth light in the underworld. For the first time, the place of the dead people would receive light. Amen? So, the Lord broke asunder the fittest, which could not be before be broken and the, by the invisible power. Amen? And he set them free. So let us read Colossians 2 verse 15. Amen. 
Colossians 2 verse 15. It says that verse 14. Having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he took, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, having disarmed, praise the Lord, having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made public spectacle of them. And therefore, in the underworld, Jesus Christ disarmed the powers and authority, or the power that subjected the death, the unbelief death, the sinner's death in the underworld, he disarmed them. Amen. But what he did publicly that everybody witnessed on the on the mountain of Golgotha. Amen. He triumphed over them by the cross. Therefore, all that all the power that Satan has was because of sin. And the death also, a principle also have power because Satan has subjected all those people under his authority. Now, sin has been paid for. And therefore, Satan and Bezebel do no more have power and authority to subject you in total darkness. Amen? So, this Easter Saturday, this was the invisible thing that happened. Praise the name of the living God. So, all these things the Lord has done for us to set it free. And therefore, though the cross was horrible, was disgraceful, it has eternal value to set the souls free from condemnation to set the soul free from the power of satan and therefore when he ascended on high he occupies everything in the whole universe amen even the underworld he occupies there he rules and he reigns that is why at the mention of the name jesus christ in heaven on earth Every, uh, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord of all things because even in the underworld, he descended to conquer the prince of the Hades. Amen? That is why you must place your faith, even the faith that you are putting in him, it is his faith that you had through the gospel of salvation. And therefore, my brothers and sisters in the law, the cross of Calvary is the means to inherit eternal salvation. The cross of Calvary is the means of forgiveness of your sins. That, that is why Satan cannot take hold of you. Amen? That is why Satan does not have power and authority over your life again. Because through the blood of Jesus, your sins have been forgiven. So all these things is made possible by the blood of Jesus, by the cross of Jesus. Therefore, the mystery unknown to Satan and wicked people is that God chose the wickedness of Satan and the wickedness of his children to crucify him on the cross in order to what? To trap them and catch them and kill them and disarm them of their power. And the power of Satan is sin. Amen? So Jesus Christ died a painful, horrific, disgraceful, unbearable, unimaginable death for you and for me to be set free from the power of sin. That is why Jesus Christ is the greatest gift of God. He became the gift of God, the grace of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit in the soul of every believer to not to live a righteous standard of God because you have now received the Lord Jesus Christ into yourself. So my brothers and sisters, whilst you continue in the Lord, whilst you continue in the faith of Jesus Christ, stand firm. Stand firm. Do not let anyone deceive you that Jesus is not real. Do not let anyone deceive you and take your eternal salvation from your hand. Amen? Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. See, there were a lot of prophets, and men of God, people of God who came on the stage, some proved that they are the Christ, but they died and stayed in the grave. Amen? And if anyone claims something and that person is approaching death, that person will renounce his or her statement. But Jesus Christ said, He is God incarnate in the flesh. I am. Amen? He said, they asked him, the, uh, the priest adjourned him. By oath, tell us, are you the son of God, the Christ, the living one? He said, I am. And when they heard this, they said, we need no more evidence. Let us crucify him. You understand? So 
he, he maintained that order of the truthfulness that he is God Almighty in the flesh. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is God incarnate in the flesh to do away with all the troubles of humanity. Amen? So, please, you are a believer in Jesus Christ. re encandle your faith in him. Rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. Recommunicate with him. Have intimate fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will, he will reveal more of himself to you. So that your fellowship with him will become intimate. You will know him better than, uh, than before. Amen. So my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let us say the opportunity at this time. That we are remembering what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. He is our Passover lamb. Because of Jesus Christ you will not see death. Because of Jesus Christ there is a resurrection for you. It is written. Oh death where is your sting? Where is your power to kill? If death has, if Satan invisible has power. Where is their power? Because Jesus, the son of the living God, resurrected from the dead. And therefore, death, where is your power? And therefore, because of Jesus, you are in him. As he resurrected, you shall also resurrect in the name of Jesus. Because at the son of his name, Jesus, by the trumpet of the holy angels, you will resurrect. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in the twinkle of an, of an eye, the Bible says, those who died in Christ will resurrect. Do you understand the kind of power Jesus is exerting in a decayed body? You cannot see the body when it decays. But at the sound, at the mention of Jesus, that the, the, the holy angels will blow the trumpet. Jesus is coming. At that sound, the earth will give up all the dead in Christ. And immediately, they'll be transformed by a numerous power, invisible power, the power of creation, the power of Jesus, Jesus, the wisdom of God, Jesus, the power of God, Jesus, the righteousness and the holiness of God, Jesus, the eternal God, the father of all creations. Therefore, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, Jesus is all that you need. Seek first the salvation of Jesus. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. This is what you need. This is the mindset you have to have. We are the generation now to what? To be on fire and revive the generation after us. Because when we don't revive them by the power of the Holy Spirit, they will get lost. They will miss the mark. Because technology and, um, and reducing the word of God has come. And a lot of people have, have, um, have gone astray. They are buried in the things of this world. That is why you need to transform your mind by renewing of your thinking. The patterns of your thinking should it be on material things. But it should be first be placed in heaven. Eternal life. And then all other things will come. My brothers and sisters, the time is now that we transform our minds. If you are backslide in the Lord as a believer, it is not too late. And each and every one wants a white bus light, but come back on your feet. Come back again. Come back to the faith of Jesus Christ. He is your righteousness. You don't have any righteousness and holiness of your own. He is everything for you. Just have the faith he has given you. Continue in that faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, we are in this Easter occasion. It's a celebration not to drink and make drumming, but it's a celebration because Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. Because of him, you will live. Because of him, you can face tomorrow. Because of him, there is forgiveness of sin. Because of him, there is a resurrection. Because of him, you can be transformed. Because of him, you can live a holy and a righteous life. Jesus Christ has made all this possible. So we are celebrating the eternal value of the cross, not the horrific and the wickedness of the cross. No, we are in celebrating the eternal value of the cross. Amen. And this should be the joy that should erupt in every believer. That Jesus Christ died for you as a person, as the individual. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, the time has come. 
that we be transformed by the renew of our minds in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. If you don't know Jesus, if you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, please, this is the time. He will not take anything from you. He, all he wants is your will. Your will to say you need a Savior. Your will to say to acknowledge that you are not a perfect human being. That you are a sinner just like all of us. All humanity have sinned. And fall short of the righteous standard of God. And by the free gift, true grace, and by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have received a free justification. Therefore, this is the time to rededicate your life to Jesus. And when you don't know him, this is the time to raise both hands in surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ to save you and to give you eternal salvation. Amen. So please save this with me. If you don't know Christ, and if you know Christ, you are basladed also, ref refresh your intimate relationship with the Lord with this prayer. Amen. Lord Jesus, I take thee as my Lord and personal Savior. I take thee as my Lord and personal Savior. Save me from all my sins. Save me from all my sins. And crown me with your eternal life. Crown me with your eternal life. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Write my name in the eternal book of life. In the name of Jesus. Today, I submit my will unto the will of Jesus. He is my Lord and my personal Savior. Let this be rooted in my heart by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah. Heaven has rejoiced because you have received the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, into your soul. And heaven, the glorious city of the King of Kings, is yours now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We are come to pray. Hallelujah. We are come to pray. We are praying that the world will, will, will be saved. The people in the world will be saved. The youth will be saved. Amen. Yes, they are lost in the pleasures of this world. They will be saved in the name of Jesus. So let us pray for the youth. Hallelujah. We are praying for all the youth who are lost in their wickedness, who are lost in, uh, in, in sin, and who are lost for the lack of the word of God. Let us pray for all the youth in Jesus' name. That they will follow the path of righteousness. That the Lord Jesus will lead them by his Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Let us pray for the youth all over the world. Amen. Father, omnipotent and eternal God, we give you praise. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for all the youth in the world that, Father, they will walk according to your principles and your divine will. They will walk in your integrity. They will walk in righteousness and holiness. They will walk by your word that leads into all righteousness in Jesus' name. If the devil... If Bezebel, the devil, has bound them with the fetus of sin, by the blood of Jesus, my Lord, my God, I release them. I set them free. Because who the Son of the living God has set free is indeed free from sin in the name of Jesus. And therefore, all the fetus and chains of sin is broken off your life in Jesus' name. My Lord, my God, we pray for the integrity of the youth who will become the future leaders of all nations. And therefore, we pray that what? Your discipline will be in them. Your command will be in them. Your righteousness will be in them. So that when they become future leaders, they will rule with righteous mindset. They will rule with righteousness. They will rule with what? Heavenly morality and ethics. In Jesus' mighty name, my Lord, my God, we pray that you protect the youth from hurt, untimely death, from untimely death, accident of all kinds, and misfortunes of all kinds. In Jesus' mighty name, we set them free, my Lord, my God. We bless them with heavenly mindset, with new ideas of development, new ideas of living rightly in this earth. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise for an answer prayer. Amen. 
Now, the Bible says, he set the captives free. Those who Satan has taken captives, he, Jesus, set them free and they became his captivity in righteousness. So you are a captive to righteousness. We have been saved to do the good work. Why? Because the handwork of God does what is good. And therefore, God, you are God's handwork, created new to live a new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because all those who are in the Lord are new creatures to do good works. So we are praying that believers all over the world will begin to do good works because they represent Jesus Christ on the earth. Let us pray that believers will have this mindset in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, we pray thee, O Lord, that your integrity will be what endowed upon all your people, that they begin to live a newness of life. They will begin to live the Christ-like life in the name of Jesus. Let them be transformed. Let them live that Christ-like life in Jesus' mighty name. My Lord, my God, that we will work out goodness in the land of the living. We will show people kindness, humility, and uh, 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 and charity will be our portion because this is how people know us by loving one another and caring for one another my lord my god by your supernatural power let this be known to the conscious mind of all your people in jesus mighty name we give a praise for an answer prayer hallelujah amen now while jesus was in the underworld and when he resurrected the dead in Christ, the dead who believed, who had <coughs> the faith of Abraham, resurrected, including Simeon's two sons. And therefore, we are praying, all those who are spiritually dead, spiritually, they have been tied by the devil, demons. Amen. We are setting them free in the name of Jesus Christ because he went into the underworld so that you will have a name above them. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, anyone who is tied by demons and by Satan, in Jesus' name, we free them. So pray this prayer and free yourself from the unknown chains of the devil in Jesus' name. Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, I pray thee according to your word, Jesus that you are the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, that you live for all eternity and you hold the keys of Satan and death. And therefore, I pray that all those who have been imprisoned by Satan, Jesus, by the mercy of your name, Jesus, let every spiritual prison door be opened in Jesus' name. Let every spiritual chain be broken off you in the name of Jesus. My Lord, my God, those who have been uh, uh, attached and those who have been tied with sickness, Jesus, I set them free by your word. Set them free by your word, by your voice. Let them be relieved from the bondage of sickness in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, set them free from the bondage of sickness in Jesus' name. I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to go into the minds and the heart and the bones and the blood and the arteries and the veins of every person that is listening in Jesus' name. Let the power of the Holy Spirit erupt and illuminate all your body, soul, spirit, and body right now in Jesus' name. May you be healed from every contamination of the body, which is sicknesses and diseases in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus is your Lord. And when he's in you, sickness cannot live in your body. Therefore, I pray for your consciousness of Christ in you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, let us pray the prayer of dedication. Rededicate your life unto Jesus. Rededicate your will, your choices, you're handling with people. Rededicate it unto the Lord Jesus. Say, Jesus, I submit my will unto your will. May I do your will in your kingdom. Jesus, come and take control of my life. By your Holy Spirit, lead and guide me into all righteousness. By your holy war angels, protect me from all the arrows of the enemies. By your holy war angels, Destroy every weapons of the enemy in Jesus' name. Pray this prayer. Jesus, 
We rededicate our lives, soul, spirit, and body unto your mighty able hands. Jesus, we submit our will under your will, that your will will be done through us in power and authority. That Jesus, you reveal yourself giant. You reveal yourself superior. You reveal yourself as righteous. You reveal yourself holiness through us to the people that are watching us in Jesus' name. My Lord, my God, we pray that Father, you use us in your miraculous work on in the land of the living. Jesus, we pray thee that take ahead of us, go ahead of us in everything we do now in Jesus' name. Jesus, by your word, release your holy war angels to protect us, to protect us, our family, our children. People's uh, work, businesses, protect their integrity from the hands of the enemy in Jesus' name. May your holy war angels protect them from the arrows of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. We give you praise, Jesus. We thank you for we don't have any God apart from you. Even the devil says that you are all powerful in your human nature. We thank you. We bless you. We give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. You can rejoice in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is victorious on everything. Amen. God wish bless you. Hallelujah. God wish bless you. First lady, God wish bless you. Jesus the King, God wish bless you. Mama Gina, Mama Gina Sab, God wish bless you. First lady, God wish bless you. My brother, Eric White, God wish bless you. Ajua. And do chua God richly bless you. You are doing a great job by sharing. God Almighty bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you for the good work you are doing. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord keeps you. The Lord expand you in everything you are doing. We are for we are heading towards heaven. Hallelujah. And therefore, our life portrays heaven on earth. The Lord bless you until we see tomorrow. Hallelujah. Shalom.